President Biden has ordered 1,500 active duty troops to report to the southern border. This comes as the pandemic era law the government has used to automatically expel undocumented migrants is set to expire next week. There are already 2,500 National Guard members deployed there. The Pentagon says the additional troops could arrive as soon as next week and could be deployed for a 90-day period. To be clear, those troops will not have a law enforcement role, but provide administrative help, including with processing asylum claims, easing the burden for authorities already on the ground. Maria Villarreal recently went on an exclusive ride with Customs and Border Patrol as officials are worried about a surge of migrants in the coming days. What will happen if Title 42 is allowed to expire? Maria has this in-depth report from Texas. <laughs> Desperation and frustration no I was booming just... along the country's southern border. Attempts to find a way into the United States growing more brazen. With Title 42 on the verge of dissolution. The Biden administration under fire for persistently high rates of migrant arrivals. In just the two years of Secretary Mayorkas's reign at DHS, more people have come into this country than all of the eight years of Barack Obama's presidency and all four years of the Trump presidency combined. We've seen one sector out of eight experience an increase. That's not a crisis. That just means I'm busy in one sector out of eight on the northern border. Fighting back in the field by implementing a series of new policies that could effectively change the landscape of our immigration system. Here, follow me just at 9108. Okay, now I know where we're going. The Rio Grande Valley sector is consistently one of the busiest regions for Border Patrol agents, covering more than 34,000 square miles of southeast Texas. It's arguably the most challenging area to secure. In March of 2020, the Trump administration approved using a health policy along the border to expel migrants to prevent the spread of COVID. Three years later, despite the pandemic essentially being over, the Biden administration is still heavily relying on Title 42. With attempts to repeal the policy blocked in court, officials say they have no other option. On a recent embed with Border Patrol agents in South Texas, we watched as several groups were apprehended in a matter of hours. One included a family with small children. Caminando? No, in a raft. There's five here with two children. All of them are from Mexico. There's a, there's a good chance that this group right here will quickly get processed and will be back in Mexico by the end of the day. Since 2020, DHS has used Title 42 to expel migrants more than 2.7 million times. That accounts for more than half of all Border Patrol apprehensions in the last three years. Agents say it will likely be used on all of the migrants we saw on this day. They'll be back in Mexico within, I'll say, eight to ten hours. And the likelihood of them crossing back in? Very high. While Title 42 allows agents to quickly get migrants out of the country, it doesn't come with legal consequences, meaning migrants can make multiple attempts at illegal entry. The policy's expiration date is set for May 11th, and over the last few months, DHS leaders have been quietly rolling out new policies to prepare. But Border Patrol Chief Raul Ortiz expects another surge of migrants along the border likely to come in the next week. I have some areas where the capacity is limited, whether it's I don't have enough agents, I don't have enough infrastructure, I don't have enough technology. I have other areas where I think our agents have really locked down the border security situation. Certainly need more Border Patrol agents out here on the front lines. I need to be able to build an enterprise behind them to process the migrants that we encounter each and every day. The Department of Homeland Security now announcing they will be working with immigration partners in Latin America to open regional processing centers. The first few expected in Colombia and Guatemala will pre-screen migrants to help them find legal pathways into the U.S. This is a hemispheric challenge that demands hemispheric solutions. 
working with our neighbors in the region, we can and will reduce the number of migrants who reach our southern border. The Biden administration is also working with Mexico to expel up to 360,000 Cuban, Haitian, Nicaraguan, and Venezuela migrants annually, targeting those without valid passports while narrowing legal pathways for others. Immigration advocates blame the U.S. for putting asylum seekers in danger with this policy by keeping them in Mexico where their safety is not guaranteed. That frustration shared by border communities in Texas that are now bearing the brunt of this immigration battle. Our main challenges are we need commerce and trade to be moving. And you got all these guys from a lot of other places that know nothing about the border. Sam Baia grew up along the South Texas border. He owns an international bridge in Rio Grande City and leases it to the federal government. His community thrives on a safe but busy border. There's billions of dollars and hundreds of thousands of jobs across the United States benefiting from this. What they need is better equipment, better methods to examine things. You don't stop the drugstore because one of the guys in the drugstore is giving away prescriptions. We wouldn't have Walmart then. We wouldn't have CBS and the Walgreens. You're constantly training better, putting more equipment in. The next generation of inspection equipment, they can tell you if you've changed a bolt on the car. I never thought I'd do this. We volunteered to have facial recognition. Via worries the border from California to Texas is being used by both sides of the aisle. And as the deadline to get rid of Title 42 creeps closer, uncertainty continues to grow, making it harder for communities like this. My father was Mexican and my mother was from East Texas. So they, they joined together lived a happy life, why can't we? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.